Hi everybody, I'm Ivan Vukovic from Shoutem. I work there as software engineer. Uh, I develop our mobile web framework for mobile hybrid apps. And as my workflow every day, I have to optimize browser rendering. So I will try to teach you some techniques and tools of how to do that. So how users see the fast web? They will say it opens fast. Some of them will say animations are smooth or scrolling is silky. But it's all, along, all in all, it's a great experience for them when they see the fast web. So what we have to do to achieve that? How to do that? How to make web enough fast to give them great experience? So if web opens fast, most probably is that critical rendering path is optimized. And if web works smooth, animations and scrolling obviously run at 60 frames per second. So why 60 frames per second to make smooth and silky experience while using the web? Because we have to match displays, device display uh, refresh rate. So in each frame, we have to paint new picture. And that gives us just 16 milliseconds at each frame. Obviously, less than 16 uh, milliseconds in each frame. So what we have to do at each that frame to make that? Obviously, we have to run some JavaScript. After that, we have to calculate some style that will apply it to our elements. After that, we have to uh, calculate geometrics, where our elements are positioned on the screen. And after that, we have to transform that elements into pixels that will be drawn on, on the screen and make them composite in composite layers because we don't want uh, our elements overlap on the screen. So some of them are shown at the top of, of the others. So do we have to do that all the time, every 16 milliseconds? No, because application has different lifestyle and it has different states in which it is. So first of all, there is load. And we have some time when it's up, uh, when its application should be loaded. After that, we have some idle time where we wait for user to make some action. And response, where we have some time to respond on user action and show the animation. So how much time we have at each of that state? First, at load, we have one second, which is obviously much, or is no. At idle, we have small chunks of 50 to 100 milliseconds each, at each chunk, after each load. At response, when user clicks or taps on our screen, we have 100 milliseconds to react on that action. If we don't, don't buy batteries, <laughs> We will miss our talk. So uh, we have 100 milliseconds to react on his action. And after that, we have to match that budget of 16 or less milliseconds to have smooth animations. So how to measure are we at the each budget? Each, uh, uh, are we matching that each budget of every of that state. So just by using Chrome DevTools timeline tab. So I will show you how to measure each of that tasks or browsers, browser tasks where for each that <laughs> task, sorry. Uh, so JavaScript. We so earlier that we have just three milliseconds to run our JavaScript. So how to measure that? 
when we run our timeline tab and record our behavior, we have to check JS profiler flag. And then we will have to, we, we can see how, how long each function takes to run. If we want to see memory consumption, which is obviously important to have silky smooth app, we have to check memory flag. Also, <coughs> when you find some of your function too slow or you think it's too slow and find new solution, you think it's maybe faster than your earlier solution, you can, you can compare that solutions on JS perf. You also don't concentrate on every single line because sometimes it's every line can make small difference which is not important unless you are making game in browser or something like that. So for animations, if you use JavaScript, use request animation frame, which is supported in Chrome and I think Firefox for now, instead of set interval or set timeout. In that request animation frame callback, run your JavaScript first. So after that, do all style and layout changes. And if animation is simple animation, like some transition, your object have to go from right to left, you can use CSS transitions as optimization option. So how to use them? Define the first state of your elements, define the last state of your elements, calculate the differences, invert the value given by that calculation, and then just play that, play that transition. Paint it on the screen. Style. So, style, it's not, there is not much to optimize, but don't use too complex selectors when you write your CSS. Layout is task where browser have to calculate geometric position of each element. How much is used? <coughs> geometric position of each element. So, obviously, if you have too much DOM elements, it's most likely that your application or layout task will take longer. Uh, most common error here is forced synchronous layout. So if you write and read your CSS in the loop, you will make that error to show. How to, how to determine it in our timeline tab? You will see it as yellow exclamation marks if you use waterfall view, or if you, if you use this flame view, you will see it as red triangles on your layout events. After that, uh, find the line where, where, where it's happening and solve it by changing and applying your style, reading and applying your style in batch. So first read all the properties, and after that, apply it to your elements in one batch. So paint. Paint, it's, as I said earlier, it's task where browser have to uh, transform the render tree to the pixels that will have be painted to the screen. So it, it, it is the most, uh, it is the most <laughs> uh, expensive task. It, it takes long to run. So try to avoid it. Check the CSS triggers and 
do animations with only CSS properties that don't cause the paint, uh, paint event to trigger. Also, how to measure the paint? In the rendering tab of Google Chrome console, check the uh, show rec uh, painting rectangles. And when you scroll your page or using it, uh, green rectangles will be will be uh, drawn on on your web page, and try to minimize areas of that rectangles. So you will have to paint less on your page, page, and your paint task will take much less than than you expect. Also, if you want to minimize that, put your layers and elements to the 3D space. By promoting that with will change transform or old hack way, old hack way with zero translate hack. That works on iPhone, as you know. But try to avoid promoting that to all your elements because you will have memory leaks, obviously. Also, when you're writing your code, do not try to optimize it before you, you measure how much it takes to run. So avoid premature optimization. Always first write your code, then measure it, and if it's too slow, then try to optimize it. Find the solution. Do not optimize uh, when you are writing. So. Why good performance it's even matter? In one A-B testing, Facebook slowed down their app to 30, per, uh, 30 frames per second, and users showed 50% uh, less engagement to it. So good performance means good UX. Also, measure it, optimize it, and you will get your app run fast on mobile. So what to read next after this fast <laughs> uh, talk? Read Paul Lewis' blog. It has great resources on how to optimize it and great solutions. Read the Designing for Performance book by Lara Hogan from Etsy. Uh, David Walsh blog. It has uh, different animating uh, solutions and also if you want to have the fast web, you will, you will have to know uh, manage your memory in JavaScript. So obviously watch Adi Asmani's talk on memory management, management in JavaScript. Also if you want to take whole course on web performance for uh, critical rendering path, take the web performance optimization course on Udacity, and there is also browser rendering optimization course there. So that's it. Thank you for choosing my <laughs> talk. And okay. Thank you, Ivan. Please, questions, raise your hand. You will need microphone because you will be recorded. Uh, well, I'm interested. Uh, are you using some kind of hardware acceleration like WebGL yeah, or uh, something like Translate that? Yeah, Translate 3D, it's actually hardware accelerated. So when you, when you put that rule on your element, a browser will uh, force the usage of GPU. So it will be hardware accelerated because it has to make composite layer in 3D space to, to show it like that. But actually you are don't uh, translating that element because it's set to zero. Okay.